Mary Ellen, did you start the recording? I started the recording. And it's going to the cloud? Yes. Okay. Hi, welcome everyone. We're so glad you're here today from both the greater Sacramento area and afar. So welcome, including Canada. We love the, we just especially love our international guests, but we love every one of you. So today we're going to hear another wonderful presentation by Mary Ellen. She's going to talk to us about illustrating our recipes. So first, let's just learn quickly about our two hosting organizations. We've got the Renaissance Society here at our local California State University, Sacramento, where we learn, connect, and then share. So it's not just about learning, it's not just about connecting with others, but it's sharing what we know, sharing what we do. So Renaissance provides opportunities for, for participatory lifelong learning and community engagement for adults. I've got the link to our website there. The second organization is Friendship Force of Sacramento, which is part of an international um, organization with over 300 clubs around the globe. We explore to understand and then serve. And our organization is dedicated to cross-cultural understanding and our members travel and host others in the name of global friendship and peace. That's our website, ffsacramento.org. Um, as I said a little bit earlier, both organizations really care about our, our global community. And during the pandemic, opening up these presentations online virtually to our um, global community has been one way that we're able to give back. We haven't done this officially, but I'm going to start including letting participants and folks who view this later know how they can register for more upcoming virtual events. This will not go away. Even when the pandemic is over, we will continue to offer some kind of virtual learning, virtual experiences. So you might want to take this down. I put it in the chat earlier, but I will put it in again. Renaissance Cafe Sacramento, all one word, dot com slash events. That's where you can find out a very brief explanation of the upcoming uh, virtual events. And then it has the Eventbrite link that will take you over to Eventbrite. And of course, then you would register on Eventbrite. We also have a YouTube channel with all of our previously recorded virtual events. And that's the link. I'm going to put both of those in our, in our um, chat room and you can copy those so you have it if you are unfamiliar with either one of those links. Event etiquette, I know you've been on uh, Zooms before, but we do ask that you mute yourself to minimize that background noise. During the presentation, if you can use chat to ask questions, if it gets more involved, we'll ask you to unmute. Um, but there will be time to ask questions because we want this to be interactive. We ask that everyone be kind and respectful to everyone else. And this is for fun. Remember, Mar Mary Ellen is volunteering her time to present this virtual event. Just some of the supplies <laughs> that you might want to use is a favorite recipe and your imagination. Pencil and paper to just sketch up your ideas. When you actually do the um, the illustration, you might use colored pencils, markers, watercolors, or other paint, and then create any kind of drawing you like. It's about inspiration. This additional resource is the Canadian artist I was talking about earlier. She talks about illustrating a recipe, and that will be in the, um, that is also, you know, on the, in the presentation. I can send you both a copy of well, you know what, I cannot send you a copy of the PDF, but I will send you that link and I'll send you when I send you out the link to this recording. That'll come through Eventbrite. So now I'm going to stop sharing. Mary Ellen, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and begin and just so glad to see all of our folks. If you haven't already, please let us know where you're from in the chat. That would be great. Okay, Mary Ellen, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to share my screen. 
and it always takes me a, a minute to get this started, for which I apologize. So today we're going to talk about how to illustrate a recipe. We, I always like to start with an idea. What recipe would you like to illustrate? And for you to find one of your favorites that doesn't have a lot of ingredients to practice. I can't say enough how much I suggest that people practice. The first time that you do something, you're just fleshing out an idea that you want. You're not going to be able to master it. So these are truly sketches. What uh, I was inspired by today is this is a recipe. You'll see more of this later for a bumstead, bumsteads. I found it in a community cookbook. I was surprised at some of the um, recipes that they had it. Bumstead was, um, Dagwood Bumstead was one of my favorite characters. So this is just a card, a recipe card from, from that. That was my inspiration. <clears throat> Plan, scope out your skills. So what technique do you wanna use? I've thrown in collage, watercolor, pen and ink, simple line drawings, a combo. It can literally be almost anything that you want. I never learned how to uh, draw. I tend to work in 3D um, sculpture. So I have actually created food art. I've done recipes on a plate that I was then fired. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you some of my simple drawings. This is, this is my caliber. So do not be intimidated in any way. This is about as far as I can go in art. In fact, I taught this program for kids and adults. And when the third graders surpassed me, that's when I knew I needed to go back to writing. And again, you can just tell this is literally, I don't know if you guys can tell, that's just using crayons. This is from uh, Joy G, who was originally gonna do this class. This is her idea of a sketch. You just kind of just say, what do I want it to look like? Uh, just really simple words and small illustrations. <clears throat> and this is one of her watercolors. So you can tell she's much more accomplished than I, um, uh, I am. It could be as simple as a collage of your favorites. This one is a photograph. And I think that if you have joined me before, you know that I have over 10,000 of these recipes from all over. I like to put them together and actually use them as wallpaper, but I could pick out one of those and illustrate it as well. This is one that um, a third, a th Third, three-year-old actually did in one of our classes of stone soup. So it also, by picking things out of magazines, even though uh, it's just, you know, collage, it also gives you an idea of where to place things that are pleasing, even if you wanted to go back and draw this later. This is one, again, that Joy did, cranberry chocolate chip cookies that we did for one of our classes. So you can tell this is one where the drawing part is the cranberry chocolate chip cookies that's done by hand. Then we have collage, some original stuff and just some photographs from magazines. This is another one from one of the, the uh, kids. We just give them different kinds of construction paper, let them go at it. It would be really easy to go ahead and add words to this on how to assemble this. And I picked this one, of course, because it reminded me of the Dagwood sandwich. Pizza, again, just using simple construction paper. Then you can go ahead. Um, my suggestion was to put the instructions on how to assemble actually in the pizza so that you could use a single element. You don't have to go step by step. We can also illustrate our favorite drinks too. And just a few elements with the finished product right in the center. Here's a couple that I really like. Mint julep, bourbon whiskey. It just gives you the instructions. This is a professional designer. One of the talks that's going to be coming up soon uh, from Angela James that we hope to offer on this is called Spoken Not Slurred, and it is spoken poetry with a drink in your hand. And here's two more, the Ritz Cocktail New York Sour. And again, for this, it's these are just drawn on that paper directly. And a close-up of one. And I'm just going to now show you a few more examples from our programs in the library and a couple from professional illustrators just for inspiration. <clears throat> Where I got the uh, original inspiration from this is a site that is still on other people uh, have started to do called um, draw and then uh, cook or cook and then draw. 
kids can draw and cook. So these are just samples. This one does show you exactly what all the ingredients are that you can, um, can do. Again, you'd wanna sketch this out and get the instructions down first. This one is using just some simple calligraphy. What I like, um, I pulled this one because it reminded me of the class that Kathy did. Just a few elements that literally have to be drawn and then you can go ahead and do the wording. If you feel like your wording is horrible, collaborate with somebody who can actually do the word part. <clears throat> and this is spaghetti bolognese. And this was uh, actually sent to me from a woman from the UK who took one of our classes. And I'm hoping that she's on here now with us. Again, tuna salad sandwich, my favorite. Um, this is much more uh, uh, complex. One of the other things that you can do, I'm gonna say again for collage, because uh, you can do each of these elements, lay it into the spot and just glue on, or you can draw all in one fell swoop. The Reuben sandwich. Can be very, very simple. Here is a cheeseburger with ground beef, egg, barbecue sauce. You can see that almost any of us could end up drawing this hamburger because the lines are so, so simple We're, uh, um, to do this. And then it's filling in with watercolor. And here is one that is a combination of words and then it just uses cutouts and collage from a magazine. There is a method to my madness, the ultimate Reuben sandwich. You can see that I'm preoccupied with that Dagwood sandwich. And what we want you today is to create a single element to go into a finished recipe. Um, as I said, I have very limited skills. We did a class, I think it was last week on, um, or recently on the color wheel. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to just take the color wheel concept at least and turn it into something. And this time it's an orange. You don't have to have things reflect exactly what it looks like. It can be imaginary. This is an eggplant from Watercolors. A, a bowl of fruit or a trifle. And if she's with us, I believe this one was from Susan Osborne uh, or Janice Kelly, who's a Renaissance member. You can take a sketch out an idea that you can finish up later. Uh, as I said, I was inspired by this by a Bumstead. A Bumstead is actually not a Dagwood a sandwich. It's a tuna melt. And I have a story to go with it that I will share with you later. It's literally tuna. It's a tuna salad with melted cheese and a hot dog bun. This is a version of a sandwich like that. And you can say that it just tells you what the ingredients are because you don't always have to give explicit directions. Sometimes by just branding the illustration, people will know what it is. Again, my illustration was Dagwood. Some of you might be too young to know who Dagwood really uh, was. And this is one of my favorite drawings. Um, I took this one because I could use collage. I could cut him out and then, or I could draw, uh, use his figure as a collage and draw in between. The other reason for doing this is you really do need to have a reference point when you're drawing. I uh, am not the kind of person that can draw from imagination. So having something that I can use, or sometimes I cheat, what I would do is I would cut this out. I would put graphite or pen on the back. I would outline it, create a sketch that way. So what I'm coloring in is the sketch. The first thing you also have to do is what elements you're gonna include. So the first step is uh, to decide what you'd like to include in the final composition. I would start recommend starting with the title, the recipe or dish, and you can include, include as few or as little of the below elements as you'd like. And again, we will send some of this out to you. Make a layout sketch, start with a very rough layout. Plan out where each of the elements will go on your canvas. Think about where the visual focus of your piece will be. Place the title and plan where any text might go. Use basic shapes to represent the elements on your layout. And um, here is a sketch. Um, this is actually, again, for from Joy, depicting the process of making chocolate chip cookies. I might have forgotten to include it. Uh, an illustration of the finished dish, illustrations of the individual ingredients, text or lettering, 
uh, the recipe title, text or lettering depicting the names and quantities of each ingredient, text depicting the recipe instructions, illustrations of the process of preparing and additional graphic elements. Again, we will send you, uh, we can't do it in Eventbrite, but we do have everyone's email. So I will send some slides, not the whole thing, but some slides to you so that you'll have the instructions. And again, this is from Joy, just a really quick sketch, not spending a lot of time. And this might be all you're gonna be able to do in the time that we allot for you today. You wanna illustrate each of the ingredients and foods. Uh, as I said before, doing a Google image search for each ingredient to pull up references. They don't have to be super detailed. And you can do a really simple uh, visual style if you're not an accomplished artist. And here's another one, uh, just kind of where to begin. You can start with the words or you can start with the illustration, add the words later or vice versa. And this is a final project. And when I mean final, I mean really, uh, you know, final. So this is one that you will notice they ended up doing by hand and then scanned and finished off in the computer. And that is another option, by the way, if your lettering isn't strong. To get started, I'm going to look at a couple of YouTube videos. This is the original recipe of Bumsteads. So you can see this is the one that I'm going to work on. And I have to stop sharing this one to get to the YouTube video. So, and it is not going to let me do it from here. So my apologies, let me just um, get to the YouTube. And of course it kicked me out of my original YouTube. So give me just a minute. Kathy, you wanna talk for just a second while I get that YouTube back? I sure can, Mary Ellen, no problem. Thank you again for joining us today. I did put in chat where you can find previous uh, video recordings from events. And I've also put in there how you can register for future Eventbrite, um, future live virtual experiences. So hopefully, and if you've never done this before, just so you know, you can go into the chat and you can copy those links and then paste them either, you can put send it to yourself in an email or however you want to do, put it in a document. So you have those links to um, sign up for future events and also see any previously recorded events. And there's all kinds of things. Mary Ellen, just jump in when you're ready. Okay, so I am ready to share my screen. Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. The participants in my online class on illustrating recipes agree with me when I say that you don't need to be a master chef to illustrate a recipe. Neither do you need to be Van Gogh to make awesome art. All you need is a bit of creativity, some paper and a few drawing tools. Today we're using a fine liner, water and a brush and watercolors. When I fill my art journal pages, often I will pick a simple recipe that's a favorite and that'll be my drawing for that day. You can do that too. Pick something that's easy to explain and instead of writing down the ingredients and instructions, draw them. Think of clever ways to illustrate the things that you would otherwise read in the instructions of a recipe. Here I'm using arrows to indicate the unscrewing of the lids. For this very simple recipe, I can simply write the ingredients on the labels. Then I also draw what to do with them and add watercolors to bring it to life. Of course, you can add a fun frame, a nice title in a banner, for example, and make your recipe look as fun as you want to. Documenting what you eat is a fun art prompt in case you don't know what to draw in your art journal. You eat every day after all, right? Now you can do this too. My online workshop Awesome Art Journaling has started yesterday and it's not too late to join and make awesome art. 
Great. So that is the first video. I have another one, but I want us to have time to actually get started. So what I'm going to suggest is that if you want to unmute yourself and ask any questions now, and then in a couple of minutes, we'll have you do some work. I'm going to suggest that you turn off your cameras and I'll turn off my um, uh, camera as well. But I am going to put on some soft music in the background so that while you're drawing, and I'm going to suggest we go for about 15 minutes. So are there any questions? Mary Ellen, you know, yeah. there's some issue if we have music on a recording and we try to post it. Oh, I, if I do it, oh, if I do it as background, it's a, it's a, a audio, it's actually a YouTube. I just don't know. Let's not worry about it. So what okay. I'm going to suggest then is that I'm going to turn off my camera and try to get some um, work. Um, uh, although I hated doing that because of the recording. I might turn on that. Uh, 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 can I make a suggestion, Kathy? Yeah. You know that 18 minute video that you had? Yes. Can you turn the sound off on that and put that up? Yes, I think I can. That would be perfect. Great. So if there's no questions, we'll be back with you in a little bit while you actually get some drawing done or collage or sketching. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And even though it doesn't have words, uh, so not to distract us, you will be able to see her drawing techniques.
I just wanted to comment that uh, the style that she's using now of just going ahead and sketching over something from the back is what I do because I'm just unsure of myself as an artist. So I really recommend that. And when you see the drawing that I'm working on, you'll understand that I did it exactly the same way. Mary Ellen, one of the things I've done, if your paper is a little thicker than the paper she's drawing on right now, um, there's a couple things you can do. If you have a light box, you can, of course, use a light box, which is just basically just a box with a light that helps shine through the paper so you can see what's behind it. If you don't have a light box, I've also just put the two pieces of paper up against a window and the light from the window makes it easier to see that background drawing that you're trying to trace. I've also done one other cheat, and that is because she's using the thinner paper and, uh, and tracing. I will often take this drawing, put it into my computer with canvas paper that you can purchase so that this part of the drawing is on my canvas, and then I can work directly on canvas, especially if I think it's something that I'm going to want to frame later. And we're going to go another couple of minutes to wrap it up and then we're going to share. I went ahead just a little bit and she's now watercoloring. And, and thank you. And again, this is how I oftentimes do things, but I like having um, a good watercolor paper and that goes in my printer as well. Kathy, for, uh, even though we're uh, talking, do you wanna explain why I, I think that the watercolor works so much better than anything else you can use? Well, it's just, it's designed. If, if you're in fact using watercolor paint, it's designed for watercolor paint. So the absorption, it's typically um, cotton paper and you can do wonderful blending and it doesn't um, pill up. If you have regular card stock and you're putting water on it, what can happen is the paper can almost disintegrate a little bit and you get those little bits of paper. I've done it on um, cardstock, but truly uh, it's a nicer finish. You get a better blending. Uh, I think the colors are, are pop a bit more with watercolor paper. Great. And again, what I like about these, they can absolutely stand alone. They make great gifts for people, especially if you're doing their favorite recipes or we talked about putting it all together in a cookbook. What a nice way of doing a family cookbook, people of all ages. This is all uh, uh, was something that we always did in person. It's a little hard to do this one virtually because normally um, we would be coming around and, and helping you through the process as you're planning and sketching, asking questions. What a great family project this is for everyone to do as well. And you know, Mary Ellen, one idea I had is maybe um, in the fall, because I already thought I'd do a watercolor doodle with pumpkins. And you can see this one she's drawing that right now is very, right. very simple. And um, it just really pops now because she's going back over it with a pen. 
a fine marker. Um, it would be nice to do a card and include, you know, something, whatever, like a fall pumpkin or something yes. with a pumpkin recipe inside. I think that would be um, very nice as well. Doesn't have to be a fall one, but I'm thinking about fall classes. Now that would be wonderful. Good. All right. So we're going to give you 60 seconds and then we're going to um, go ahead and ask everybody to. I'm going to stop sharing because it's got an ad coming up. All right. And what I'm going to do is ask everyone to start their video so that it won't be any problem when the time comes. So you can just show us what you've done. And that was Shada Campbell. She's a, an artist in um, Canada. I follow her on YouTube. All right, so um, again, if anybody would like to raise their hand and then un we'll call on you and then unmute so you can show your work or ask a question. Is everyone shy? L let me share my screen. I actually took a photo of mine and put it into PowerPoint really quickly. So this is, and again, remember I told you I took somebody else's and I used that technique. Uh, this is just using a black um, uh, um, Pentel pen. And the reason that I have that watermark is uh, I'm doing something called morning coffee press and I want everything to look like a coffee cup was on it. <laughs> so I just took my coffee cup and just put it into the watercolor and then press the outside. And that's how I got the outside part. And these are just showing you how I could uh, do this in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And that's just the start of mine. That's how far I've gotten is the first piece. So again, who else would like to share with us? Don't be shy. I was manipulating the YouTube video, so I don't actually have they any. Even have one. All right, so Susan, you want to talk up so that we can highlight you? So talk. Oh, and yes, sorry. <laughs> you should be able to find me. Oh, that's wonderful. So keep on talking. <laughs> and it's dripping as we go. Um, it's lemon poppy loaf. <laughs> that is wonderful. I love that. It doesn't even matter. Well, I can fix it. But yeah, so no, that's very fast, right? I had to go and find my uh, something to work with. So but yeah, no, and I can letter it because I'm a calligrapher. So I'll add. I'll oh, add so Susan, you it. might want to offer a calligraphy thing for us. I have to tell you, I collect calligraphy pens, but oh. I don't do calligraphy yet. <laughs> oh, well, I, I can certainly introduce you. I'm a, I've been a member of a guild here for um, a long time, but I'm also, I also joined this year the um, uh, Society for Calligraphy, which is out of sort of San Diego. So Wonderful. that's your, your territory. So yeah, there's lots of things going on you might want to know about. <laughs> Wonderful. And adding calligraphy to these drawings is so wonderful. Uh, and teaming up with somebody, if you've got one skill, not the other, obviously you've got both. Again, is there anybody else that wants to share at just even the semblance of where you are or talk about the process? <laughs> Deborah, did you raise your hand? You're on mute. No, I was just in the beginning stages of direct combining directions <laughs> because it's pencil and I didn't. Right, uh, and and we didn't. Ex yeah, we didn't expect you to get very far. But you want to show that again? Okay, so on? what it's my grandmother's raspberry filled cookies, oh. and mm -hmm. I tried to I started to say the ingredients for the dough, the ingredients for the filling. And, and it should have been in thirds or organized differently. And then the rolling pin and how you have to roll it out and cut it and fill it and then make little baskets out of it. So it isn't. But... You know, the most important thing is, is it's not about uh, what we showed illustrators. It's not about that strength of illustration. It's about the love that you put into it when you're giving these recipes to someone else. Mary Ellen, Ginger and her sister have a great idea. They're going to do a cookbook for 
their niece with her favorite childhood recipes and then make copies for her children. What mm. a great, sweet, sweet gift. Great. So Ginger, if you and your sister would like to put your, uh, I'm going to put in my email. Um, I, I would love to send you out the, my whip up a cookbook for you guys to look at. It'll tell you exactly how to do a family cookbook. So I'm going to put my, in, in fact, so for, for those of you far away, yes. those of you in Renaissance will get another opportunity to connect with this. So wonderful. So I also included mine. And it will tell you, uh, it doesn't have the, um, the information on the drawings, but it will tell you everything you need to know to put together a, a family cookbook. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> and I just happen to have an extra hundred copies of those somewhere. Oh, do you need uh, I, <laughs> I'll pay for the, po oh, what I have is, uh, um, this is a how-to, right? How to save money on postage. Oh. I don't know if people are aware, but old postage, those for one cent, two cent, 12 cent, 30 cent, 39 yeah. cent stamps, yeah. I buy online for 20 to 40% off. Okay. So I always pay less for my postage than everyone else. So I will gladly um, uh, send that to everyone. Wow. Anybody wow. else want to share? And then I want to, um, I'll show you something else. Anybody else who'd like to share? Mary Ellen, if I could just say, if anybody has a question, when you are in Eventbrite, you can send an email to the Eventbrite organizer and it comes to me, Kathy. And so then I could respond um, uh, to you via email. I'm, I'm happy I checked that email. It's unique for the Eventbrite um, events, but I do check it all the time because we're very busy putting on multiple events every week. So if, if I can share, I don't know if you can see this. This is a book um, that uh, I did for the Sacramento River Delta Historical Society. These baked goods are drawings that Joy G, who was originally going to be teaching this class and is a fantastic artist, did. The reason I wanted to show you this is, is that you don't necessarily have to Go all the way. If you're going to do a cookbook, you can also just use um, small black and white drawings to then illustrate the typewritten recipe. Mm. Nice. So there's all kinds of options. And I wanted to, um, she's known for her, for her chickens. I was looking for her chickens. And this is a pear book. So I don't know if you guys can see it. Yes. So what was wonderful about that is we asked people to submit pear drawings. So uh, <laughs> we might, that's what we're gonna plan in, in July. I don't want you to laugh, but we will have an artist from the uh, Cortland area uh, during pear fair season, which is in July, we'll offer uh, how to draw pears. And this is the artist. Nice. Wow. So we'll offer that sometime in July. Again, is there anybody else who is not too shy to share, ask a question, give feedback? Oh, come on. We have a quiet group today. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I like Ginger Perfect. Yeah, that's cute. Perfect. <laughs> Good. So um, one of the things that I'll add, and I don't mind, uh, uh, you know, ending early if there's not more questions, but if you are going to do recipes, especially um, um, Ginger and Susan, I believe it was, that are going to be doing the, uh, the cookbook for family, keep the directions as simple as possible. So we all had those recipe cards that we got from family. What I loved about recipes then is that you didn't do anything longer that was on a recipe card. Now you can look at cookbooks and find that they go for pages and pages. Keep it pretty simple and use the drawings to sell the story. So Great. Kathy, yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Are you suggesting uh, that we use recipe cards? as a format or uh, no i'm saying uh i like the whole page because i like putting things into eight and a half by 11 but feel okay. free to try one in a recipe card format 
I meant the words, you know, what would fit in a recipe card. Yeah, yeah, but sort of, because those are sort of uh, deja vu as well, too. Oh, well, absolutely. That's why I showed you that picture early on of all the recipe cards that I just yeah. collaged. And yeah. I collect them. Um, I collect manuscript cookbooks, too. So when somebody says, um, I'm, right now I'm looking for uh, we still have uh, Alabama. I'm looking for Ida Sage in Alabama. I don't know where Ida Sage is, but Ida contributed a lot of recipes to one of the books that I had. And so I'll go back and try to see if I can actually find the person that created the, uh, the recipe, no matter where I find them. Mary Ellen, I just wanted to show something really quick. So this is, uh, you can't see the size and it's not recipes, but it's basically inspirational sayings. Um, uh, and it very simply, simply put together. What I like about it is it might be, oh, three quarters of an inch thick. So it's, you know, got quite a few. And all they did was punch two holes at the top and then bind it with a very thin ribbon. And what's nice is then it'll stand up on its own. Great idea. And you if you had you know information about a recipe on the back, you could just put it on the back very easily. And then when you you know flip the page, you've got the back. So that's if you're looking to do it on cards, this is probably a three by five, I think. I think it's a uh, five it, by seven. It might be a five by seven. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, whatever size you want, that's just kind of a super easy way to put it together. It's still functional because it'll stand up on its own and um, easy to, you know, have in your kitchen. And a, it might not feel as overwhelming as, you know, trying to do a cookbook if you right. put maybe... 25 35 cards together if you have a card stock front and a card stock back that's going to be that'll be plenty big enough to be able to um, give as a gift great good so i'm going to ask one last thing before we close up early and we have some new people who've actually joined us if you can, if you haven't in the chat said where you're from, let us know where you're from. I'm going to have Kathy repeat the information about the upcoming uh, programs and where you can find them. Right. Mary Ellen, could you, yeah. or could you both sort of talk a little bit about your organization? Because I caught a bit at the front. Oh, you're not, yeah. not for profit. Good. Yeah. So uh, let me do the Renaissance Society first, if that is okay. And then Kathy can do a friendship for us. Okay. The Renaissance Society is, uh, we're not a nonprofit, we're an association, a member or a uh, um, association that is affiliated with Sacramento State University in Sacramento. We started way back in 1986 with nine members of faculty who are retiring that thought, my gosh, I don't want to retire quite yet. Can we start offering some programs for the community? It has grown and grown and grown. Um, I first got affiliated with it when I was uh, way too young um, at that point. Uh, it was for um, seniors. It is now evolving in a virtual world where, um, you know, especially people over uh, 50, where we kind of concentrated on um, later and our virtual programs are open to everyone. In fact, we had a program recently with a 25 year old that added so, so much to the story we had on Shakespeare. We've had kids as well. These programs are free to the community. We would hope that even if you're far away, we now have members in 60 different cities. Uh, we'll end up sending a link to our website so if you do want to join us or support our programs or our mechanisms for, uh, for doing that, including donating to the ASI Food Pantry, which is one of the charities that we do, we have 1,800 members and uh, again, spread all over. Kathy, you want to talk about Friendship Force? I, I do. The only thing I want to say is that both organizations are providing these live virtual events but in both organizations, there is much more outside right. of the public events. I don't know what the percentage is of our virtual events it's, uh, that are open to the public, but it is a fraction of what is available to members. So the right. members get absolutely. absolutely additional benefits. Now with Friendship Force, we host people and we travel. 
that's primarily what we're doing and the and the uh, goal is to have those experiences so we learn about um, other cultures, other places to live, and that we recognize that we are so similar and that these friendships will build peace among individuals and hopefully that will just continue to grow. Now, because we are not hosting right now, in Sacramento, we have a very, very active club. We do lots of local events. Now, this is for the members where we'll do cross-cultural experiences. I'm doing a presentation in May that will be open to Renaissance members and to the public talking about local um, it, things to do locally that you might not have done before. I mean, I don't know. Does everybody know there's a sake brewery in Folsom you can tour? I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> We've funny. done that with Friendship Force. That is one of the many, 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 many things that we do locally. But we also try to, especially during the pandemic now, we are opening up our virtual meetings and events like this to connect with people, to give back to our communities and to share with others. Right, and for Renaissance, if I can also clarify for uh, members only, we have probably 40 or 50 seminars. Those are programs that last three, six or 12 weeks on topics that range from politics to racial justice, uh, documentaries, the history of music. Right now we have a talk on the history of late night. You name the topic, uh, whether it's, it's meditation, uh, ancient history, uh, uh, current uh, events, we end up having it. The presentations are what we open up to the, um, to the community as a, a part of our community engagement. So there's good reason to belong to both of these organizations. Oh, and we're it's all so right. glad to be a, pa a, a partner with the Friendship Force. So it's all right to be out of the United States then. Is what oh, you're... you better believe that we have members now in the UK. In fact, with, and uh, you know, Bits and Pieces is hands-on. The other projects that we have are called Talk, Talk, Talk. We're gonna have the Queen's Chocolatier coming from, um, um, from um, oh, I remember, I don't forget which castle in the, the fall. We're gonna have a speaker, Van Kang from Tokyo, who's going to be talking about um, uh, the role of Vietnamese food, believe it or not, in Tokyo. So the, the speakers and the members can be anywhere, especially Canada. Uh, before you go, I wanted to show you this so everybody can see. I love it. I got it out of the library and uh and it's all, it's kind of funky but it, but i mean for people that when you're saying that are doing um you know simple things right certainly and there's another one that they've got how to another how to draw food for kids which is uh kind of cutesy as well too but you know at least you can see so when when you put this posting out i went to the library and and figured out to get this and it's not exact but it helps me now seeing what you've done today so thank right. you but yeah, there's, there's our resources. And these are just meant for inspiration. We did yeah. not, we just wanted everyone to feel like they had a chance to do something hands-on. We hope that you'll take this and spend time. So even the drawing that I showed you, uh, I was able to do the coffee cup, the sketch and everything else that I had was all done and all ready. And all I had to do was ink it uh, to finish it up. But these are projects that should take you a while so that you can enjoy yourself. Okay. That's wonderful. And, uh, great. And again, and anyone Ellen, I, I put in the chat and remember, you can copy these links from the chat. That's why I'm putting them. That's why I'm dropping them in there. But I put both the Renaissance Society's uh, web page and also Friendship Force of Sacramento and Friendship Force is global. There's over 300 clubs around the world. So we have all kinds of Friendship Force clubs in Canada and all over. Oh, okay. And so. the answer is the Chocolate Talk is going to be uh, on Eventbrite. So any of our programs that are international, that's the, the whole idea is to um, to have those available. And we do about what, 24 of those a year, Kathy, probably? Um, you know what? I think the I think this semester, Mary Ellen, we did probably- I think we did 24. <laughs> We were pretty yeah, busy. We did. So we'll see. It might not always be as many as we did because of the pandemic, but they will continue. And the, the idea right now is that we plan to post them on the um, 
on the Renaissance Cafe page that I sent in. I put it in chat and I will send out to the folks who registered on Eventbrite um, the links again to the Renaissance Cafe where we post upcoming events and our YouTube channel where we have our recorded events. Cause really we're trying to just, you know, let folks sure. know about it. And there's historical things, there's art related things. It's just, uh, I mean, just all kinds of really fascinating, fascinating talks. So Mary Ellen, I think you can stop. I have, uh, 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 let me add one thing for the recording and then I'll stop the, the recording if, if I can remember. Um, Oh, please, uh, what we would like to do is we have a Renaissance Cafe blog. That blog has both lists of what our events are, but also a gallery. So if you are an artist and would like to have your work shown on our gallery, if you are a photographer, if you are a writer and want to write for us, uh, you can also contact us for that as well. So we try to do it all. And I wanna again, thank everyone for coming. I'm going to stop the recording, but stick around in the green room for a few minutes for those of you that were too shy to be recorded. Thank you, Kathy, again. I really appreciate it, all of you for coming here.